Hello, and welcome to this special climate outtake of Burning Earth Radio. This is your host, Gerard Spring, coming to you from the north. So, I've noticed a little bit of a strange anomaly over the past couple of days. Um, A lot of it dealing with the previous video in which I discussed the Arctic cyclones and some of the effects that that was having on the sea ice. And in particular, for this segment, I want to look at this wind pattern here that we see kind of pumping across the uh, North Atlantic Basin here. So right now we're looking at the surface, and we can see that over North America, you know, maybe New Hampshire, Vermont area over here, we have this nice cyclone that's developed, kind of large cyclone. But over here, over the open Atlantic, you know, we have a very large anti-cyclone, and The cyclone over here corresponds to, you know, a low pressure region where you have some air spiraling inwards to fill that low pressure zone. And then over here, you have a high pressure system with the anti-cyclone where you have a dome of high pressure and the air is spiraling out. So if we focus on this jet here, I think it's really interesting um, because if you follow the winds going north, you can see that they make a strong left turn here when they reach the base of Greenland. And this is a lot to do with the mountain ranges here. So the wind is kind of going along at the surface, and then it sort of hits these high lands here, and it makes a left turn. But if we go up in the atmosphere a little bit, we can see that these winds are starting to roll over the ice sheet, and they're transporting a lot of warm air uh, up deep into the center of Greenland over these uh, low mountains here on the south coast. And if we look at some of these air temperatures, you know, we're talking 8.6 degrees. And this is at, you know, only 1,000 hectopascals, guys. I mean, this is just above the surface, only a few hundred meters above the surface. We have 8.6 degrees deep into Greenland in November. So this is a really serious thing, folks, because it's showing effects of abrupt climate change. You have a transport of this warm air flowing northwards over the Atlantic Basin. So if we swing over here and look at the total precipitable water, you know, and track this air going south a little bit, zooming out, you can see that there's this jet charging out of the Caribbean Sea and then flowing north over the Atlantic Basin. It's almost as if you have a gear of low pressure here and a gear of high pressure here too. And this is just acting like a conveyor belt, folks, just pumping all of this warm air right up to the south coast of Greenland. So zooming back in here and flipping over to uh, the oceans, we can look at the sea surface temperatures and check out how that might be affecting things. So if I swing over here and go to sea surface temperature, you can see that there's a lot of warm water that's pooling up here into the Arctic or the subarctic rather this is more the subarctic you know and what's happening is you're seeing this with the wind patterns is because you had this cyclone anomaly up here and there's a lot of warm water up here this is creating a low pressure zone up here and what's happening is you're redistributing the high pressure zone so it's kind of over the center of Atlantic and another low pressure zone is forming over the eastern uh, part of the North American continent And then there's this giant swath of warm water kind of getting pumped up into the subarctic here. And with that, you know, a lot of this air is coming with it. And you can see this in the sea surface temperature anomaly map. I mean, this air is just getting pumped over this Gulf Stream. And this Gulf Stream is, you know, 5.6, 6.1 C warmer than normal. I mean, this is a huge temperature anomaly, folks. I mean, six degrees over this massive swath of the kind of northwest Atlantic Ocean here. Very, very, very warm waters. And you can see threads of warm water even extending up the Labrador coast here, you know, all the way to the top of the Labrador coast, in even reaching, you know, the south part of Baffin Island up here in the south coast of Greenland. And with this it's bringing a lot of warm air with it in the winds. If we swing over here and look at the temperatures, you know, we have this warm air coming up here. And these are pretty significant winds, folks. I mean, these winds coming back here to the winds, you know, 
these winds here at the south tip of Greenland are, you know, 31K. This is a solid wind coming north here over a wide area. And I think it's important because, you know, we're going to see more of these kinds of changes, folks, with, with the abrupt climate change. And if you look up here in, in the subarctic and how this is affecting things, you know, swinging up here maybe just above the surface, you have this warm air that's getting pumped up. And then you have the cold air coming down off of Baffin Island, creating this low pressure center here, you know, a nice cyclone developing here off the south coast of Greenland, deflecting a lot of this more warm air over, really over the ice dome. So it's only really cold over Greenland at the surface. You know, if we swing up just, you know, a few hundred meters, it looks much warmer. And this is due to this tremendous superheating of the Gulf Stream over here. You know, if we look at this, this superheating of the Gulf Stream is warming all this air and bringing up water from this Caribbean jet that we discussed earlier in the broadcast. So these are the kinds of temperature anomalies that we're looking at, folks. I mean, massive temperature anomalies, you know, 10 degrees plus C over Greenland in the middle of November. And if we swing over here and look at the sea ice, um, you can see, as we discussed in the last episode with the Arctic cyclones, that they had these leveling offs due to a lot of wave action, a lot of warm water getting deep in, into the Arctic, into the high Arctic, up in Norway, bringing rainstorms. And if you look at this anomaly, you know, the sea ice is just stopped. It's completely flat. It, it maybe even looks like it's decreasing a little bit. You know, and this collapse in the sea ice is related very much to what we're seeing over here you know this warm water coming up you know you have warm air coming up over greenland you know creating more of these cyclones and anti-cyclones you know just an overall redistribution of of uh, weather patterns so you know this is going to cause, of course, melt over the Greenland ice sheet, you know, I mean, or it's going to cause, you know, a low, a slow growth of the Greenland ice sheet, you know, it's as the ice struggles to compete with this warm air that's just above the surface and these warm sea surface temperatures that we're seeing right here, you know, so very serious stuff, folks. And uh, I think it's important to keep track of this kind of thing, because we're just going to start to see more of this thing happening in the future. You know, this jet is just phenomenal. I mean, you can see that this jet from the Caribbean is a planetary feature at this point. You know, this is something which is extending over a very large portion of the globe. So this is abrupt climate change, and uh, we're going to have to get used to this kind of thing, everyone. And it's important to uh, be aware of this and get the word out that these kinds of massive changes are happening. So if you found this short analysis useful, please comment, like, and subscribe. And I'm looking forward to having you along for the next one.